Hi, I'm Everett and welcome back to the shop. Um, this is a bit of a short update as well as a small project that I have to do for work. Um, the, just with all the crazy stuff going on with all this, uh, all this uh, coronavirus and the, uh, the shutdowns and the various different things that have happened in, well, all over the world, uh, one thing I am thankful for is that at least the industry I'm in, where I'm working on heavy trucks now in the small company I'm with, uh, we're still working. So I am thankful for that. I feel for a lot of people as I have a number of friends who are out of work right now and just everybody's waiting to see what happens. But uh, one way or another, um, we'll, uh, we'll have to ride this one out together. So um, one way or another, uh, I don't know as far as uh, what other people are doing for videos. Um, I will try to keep going with videos uh, as I can. I haven't been able to as much lately because, uh, again, working full time and uh, with uh, various different things happening in life. Uh, uh, one of which um, I was gonna. One of which I was. I was waiting to see how long I would wait to tell everybody. But the cup is true. <laughs> the cup is true. Uh, I got this when my little man was uh, in, you know, in development, and uh, little man will be getting a sibling soon. So. As far as the amount of time I have right now, um, I may not have in a, a short while. So if the videos disappear for a short time, please cut me some slack. Uh, I will return <laughs> once I get, get a little bit of sleep. So yes, we're having another child soon. So I, any time could be go time really. But uh, there's that exciting news um, as well. Uh, I have a couple other things I wanted to say thank you for. Uh, one of the local fellas in uh, the Edmonton area here uh, gave me an email a while back and uh, turns out he had an extra BXA style tool holder kicking around. Uh, it was ordered or shipped to him by mistake rather and uh, uh, so yeah he came over had a good visit um, did a little bit of TIG welding a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of shooting the breeze some shop talk and but yeah thanks Kyle I do appreciate that that's awesome and as well I got an envelope a little while ago from the UK and it's from my friend Matt, who I've met through the channel here. We've been emailing a bit and whatever. And uh, Matt's happened to have a spare um, insert style uh, parting blade. He had that and some, and some tips, so he sent those. I'll have to get either a holder or make a holder for this, but I'm excited to try it to see, you know, I'm hoping it'll work better for parting than uh, some of the attempts I've had in the past. So again, thank you, Matt's. I really appreciate it, um, you know. Thank you everybody who've supported my little channel, um, just even with your comments and your suggestions and stuff. Uh, good constructive criticism. I do appreciate it because I've learned a lot. So, but yeah, thank you Matt, so I appreciate it. As for what I have to do right now, um, it's actually in the afternoon. I came home from the shop early because this job needs to get out the door, you know, like ASAP. Um, what this is, is it's a, uh, it's a clutch shaft off of an 18 speed transmission on a, uh, well, this one isn't a highway tractor, it's a water truck, but uh, you know, again, one of those you know, things right now as far as uh, uh, critical industries, well, hauling water to people who have cisterns is kind of a critical thing. Um, so this guy here, uh, I don't know if you can see in the camera, depending on the focus, how that end, here, how about that? Yeah, that end is all kind of chewed out, whatever the uh, linkage rod was loose in it for a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to fix this. So um, the suggestion was made as to just basically fill welding it and then machining the bore again. But it sounds like with this, they've tried that before at the shop and it hasn't really had lasting results. So what we're going to do with this one is we're actually going to machine this side flat, laminate a piece of steel on it, re-sleeve it and go with that. So as far as on the end here, where it's all messed up, near as I can tell, uh, about 5 eighths of an inch or about 16 millimeter will clean up most of that. Now, as you can see, it will make the material a little bit thinner around the loop end, um, this end here. But as I say, we're going to sleeve the center there with a steel bushing as well. Um, what I've decided to do to reinforce this is take a piece of quarter inch material. This used to be a uh, shim for like a drive shaft uh, steady bearing for a lift kit. I'll shave a bit off of this edge here because of the fact that it's not actually flat and then we'll uh, bore and then sleeve uh, 
that section in the middle there. Now the first step here is to try to get a flat surface on the back side here. This is a casting that even just looking at the marks on here, it looks like it was just sort of, well, shaved off with a grinder or something. Um, there really isn't much for a reference surface, so just sort of eyeballing along the bottom of this, um, uh, of this uh, uh, end of the arm here. Uh, using one of the Phil and Pierre special jacks underneath here to hold this end. Clamped here, clamped here. Reasonably sketchy, it should work for what we're doing. Um, again, I just need to make this surface flat and uh, for that we're just going to use a three quarter inch end mill. Special aluminum cutting motion motion. Now yes I do realize I have the piece held at a bit of an angle to the axes. That's just the best way I could find to clamp it so I wasn't putting the jack over top of a groove in the table or a T-slot. Now I do realize that I could be running this faster most likely and getting theoretically a better finish but not actually worried about surface finish because actually a slight roughness will be good. If we have a slight amount of roughness, that'll give a little bit more for the uh, JB Weld to grab onto. I think we got it. off there with this part here that'll be okay so this end here I'm just gonna file uh, file that part smooth um, this gives me a spot that I can laminate a piece of uh, a flat bar onto so then what we're gonna do is we'll take this guy here lay it on here take our clamp I'm just gonna clamp it on for the purposes of marking that'll work and take our Randy Richards scribe here. Thanks again, Randy. I really like this. That's to there, and then one side of that little shoulder I made, and the other side of that little shoulder. <coughs> so there we are. Because the little shoulder I cut here isn't exactly square. That'll be close to the line of best fit. So I'll just use the uh, bandsaw now to cut the sh rough shape out, probably smooth off the edges on the sander, and then we'll laminate it to this, uh, to this lever. So what I was originally going to do was just bore it all out to, you know, five-eighths of an inch, press the sleeve in and call it done. What I think I'm going to do instead is take the little uh, brace here and actually weld the uh, uh, weld the reinforcing bushing into this guy before it gets put into here. Uh, the uh, brace here with the bushing is all going to be JB welded into place into the aluminum so that'll uh, that'll provide a nice solid connection. I think that'll give it a bit more strength um, because again the you know heavy duty clutch has a fair amount of uh, force put on it. So for that I have this piece of uh, three quarter inch or roughly 19 millimeter round stock Let's just grab the lathe and uh, make up a quick bushing to go in there and then weld it in. So basically what I want to do is I want to start off with making a shoulder that size, that well the hole there, 
that's roughly an eighth, an eighth inch thick. And we got 530,000, 531, so roughly a hair over a half an inch. Yeah, 625. So now I need to touch off on the end. I'll set my dial indicator here to how is how thick is that plate? Thought it was an eighth of an inch. Yeah. It's actually a hundred and about a hundred and ten thousandths thick. 112. Okay, so one inch, 1.112. So then uh, once the reach, this reads one inch, because I have it set to one inch, 112, then we'll have our uh, the, the correct depth of our shoulder. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Just fits inside. So the hole we have to put in there, um, this is the messed up little stud that came out. Uh, we're gonna replace that, but it's roughly, hey, we can get rid of the glare. It's a 3 8 inch um, fine thread. So the hole that goes to the center will be 3 8 of an inch. everything. Take a measurement. We need, well, it says 510 thousandths, so a little over half an inch. We give it 520 and then sand off whatever extra we don't use. Let's our, take our parting bit. Just use the piece of material for a flat edge. There we go, good enough. One inch, 520 on the dial. And that reads one inch. That's where we're going to stay. We'll lock the carriage. Grab our oil pot. And I've already got the uh, uh, parting tool square to the job. Let's see how this works. Hey, it's good. Seriously? 
Basically, I just want to put a chamfer on it before it gets parted off. Well, so far, thankfully, it seems to be working. Crud, that actually worked like it was supposed to. Let's peel this little burr off. So, there we go. There's our little uh, bushing that we're going to weld in. We've got to degrease this and take all the contamination off of this guy. But it'll go in like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the plate we made. Reinforcing plate. Use that as our as our template or guide, or whatever, just to sort of figure out where to put the uh, to, to hog out the hole. I'm going to use a five eighths end mill. Now the thing is, I know well it's square enough because by doing this with the quill, and then I look underneath here, and I don't see like it looks pretty flat against the material. So that's square enough for our purposes here. What we're going to do is we're going to set that in place, match up the contour. Because the hole itself is just a smidge over a half inch, I've got a half inch end mill that I'm going to use just the shank of. And we're going to do the eyeball method. Because we're matching up and we're making this brace to making this brace to a custom fit. So we may as well use it for our sizing. That's looking about center. And again, for this purpose, the eyeball method will work just fine. What we're going to do is we're going to go through with the half inch first, and then, you know, concentrically we'll go through with, and step our way up. That looks about right. right. Step one is done. cleaned up most of the hole. There's one very small portion there that, uh, you know, was still kind of wallered out. Very, very small now. At least you now have a concentric bore. So the next step is to assemble these together and uh, put those, or mount that in there. I've already wire wheeled it off, cleaned it off with solvent, and uh, yeah, if I have to, I'll clean up the inside of the hole after. See how shaky I am today. Fairly. That was actually relatively painless. We're going to mix up a little bit of JB Weld. I want to put JB Weld in the surfaces in between to laminate the two together just to make darn sure it's not coming apart. It, doesn't, it won't take much, that's for sure. 
I've always been fascinated by this stuff. And I'm not sure if there are any chemists out there watching this. Probably have better things to do than watch some guy messing around his garage. But, um... This stuff has always had such an interesting smell, and I've always been curious what it is. It almost smells like some form of epoxy base. So, take and, as I say, it won't take much. All right. <clears throat> now, the reason I didn't add any to the bore is because it would just get scraped out anyway. So that's a nice tight fit there. Yeah, we're lined up. Should be able to use this to start clamping and driving that guy into place. Shouldn't take much. There we are. Okay, so we'll scrape the excess off here. I know I could just file it once it's solid, but let's just get the worst of it right now. It's funny because you can feel when you're through the uh, through the steel into the aluminum. Take my cheap pop riveter. There's one. Two. All right. Nice. So I realized that, uh, you know, it's not necessarily an invisible repair. You can see the plate and the bushing that were added to the uh, original aluminum casting. But considering how much these things are, I mean, they're a few hundred bucks and, uh, you know, be a few days away and we need to get this truck out the door, um, this will suffice. So I am actually, I'm reasonably happy with the repair, even as I say, it may not be pretty, but it'll work. But uh, just like always, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to all of you who've subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, that's cool. Thanks for coming through. Uh, thanks to everybody for all the comments and the, well, the thumbs ups and such. And, and the, for the emails. Uh, I've heard from so many different people around the world. It's just very, very cool. Uh, even just getting to know some local people, you know, like Kyle. Kyle, thanks again for that tool holder. Um, and Matt's, thanks for that, uh, thanks for the parting blade. Uh, I don't expect people to send stuff. It's appreciate it when, you, when people do. Uh, it's certainly not an expectation. Uh, but I really, I just, I just want to say how much I appreciate everybody who, um, like all the new friends I've made through this channel. Uh, I know that during the time I was a stay-at-home dad, uh, we'll talk about social or isolation. Um, I kind of was feeling stir crazy. It was really cool to at least be able to connect with the community of like-minded people through that. And well, with times like they are right now, um, the you know being able to connect with other people, your family, your friends, you know even sometimes your neighbors, having to do it electronically, uh, just through various forms of media uh, like this or what other connecting uh, media, it's it's amazing how much it helps. So, like I said before, I just want you all to know how much I appreciate you. I know I don't know every one of you by name, but, uh, you know, I appreciate you all. Make sure you, uh, make sure you hug your family. Make sure you, make sure you stay connected with your friends. 
let them all know you still care. So thanks again. I'll see you next time. Yeah, I'm back. That's where she goes. Uh, once more. And back. Yeah. Thank you.